Hi, in this video we will take a detailed look on how to dual boot Windows 10 and Linux Mint 20. We will be dual booting using legacy BIOS mode and MBR partitioning scheme. I will be doing this on a Seagate 500 GB hard disk drive. The video for a dual boot using UEFI and GPT partitioning scheme will be released soon. So please subscribe if you haven't. So let's power on our machines. Alright, so once we have logged in inside our computer, we need to download the ISO and a couple of software such as a BCD editor as well as a disk burning utility. So what we want to do is first of all back up any data while this operation actually doesn't affect your C and D drive data, but uh, it really helps if you can uh, back up your data and this is a fresh install so I don't have anything to back up. So what you want to do is open your favorite uh, web browser and then search for Linux Mint download. Of course, Edge is not my favorite web browser, but this is a fresh install. So this is what I have. So once you search Linux Mint download, click on download Linux Mint and then come down here and what you see is Cinnamon, Mate and XFCE. Now these are all 64 bit uh, installs. So if you are just coming from Windows, uh, Cinnamon is the one you want to click on because as you can see over here in the picture, this resembles the Windows environment uh, pretty well. So click on Cinnamon and uh, we want to click on Evo Vice CDN. So all these things you see here are your country wise mirrors uh, depending on where you live. So these are mirrors for Asia, America, Europe. But in my opinion, the worldwide mirror uh, is faster than most of the country wise mirrors, at least uh, in the case of Asian countries. So click on Evo Vice CDN, that's the best. On Edge, it comes over here. So you can just save on Fire uh, on Firefox. You'll get a pop-up window, and the progress. Once you click OK, the progress will be mapped on the top right. And on Chrome, the download should start automatically. So now I'm going to cancel this because I already have it downloaded here. So this is how it should look. If it doesn't look like this, that's probably because you have WinRAR installed. So this is how WinRAR looks like. But uh, once you have this downloaded, this is how it should look like. All right. We also want to uh, go ahead and download a uh, certain software such as the BCD editor as well as the uh, disk burning utility. But for those of you who are on a 32-bit architecture, as disk is only for 64-bit, uh, Linux Mint has already uh, dropped support for 32-bit from uh, Linux Mint 20. So you have to settle with Linux Mint 19.3, which uh, I think if I'm right, uh, is based on Ubuntu 18.04 and I'll put the link of all these sites in the description so you can just go ahead and download uh, based on your architecture. But most of you are on 64 bits, so this is what you want to download. Um, disk burning utility, so we want to download Rufus. You can also download a Balina Etcher or whatever disk utility, disk burning utility, utility you, uh, you like. But Rufus works best for me on Windows, so just click on the first link and you want to download the latest version which is 3.12 at the time of recording this video. So click on that and you can save it. Again, I'm going to cancel this as you already saw I have it. So then we want to install EasyBCD, which is a BCD editor. So click on this and this is a paid software, but we can go ahead and register and use the non-commercial version. So click here, type in your name and email and then click on download. Uh, as you can see, I already have downloaded this and then take your time to install Rufus and EasyBCD, all right? So once that's done, uh, you have your ISOs and your disk burning utility as well as your BCT editor. We are going to uh, come to disk management and create some partitions. So how you go to disk management, you can right click on this windows icon here and then come to disk management and this window will open. So your D drive is where you store all your data. That is what we are going to partition. Uh, partition. So this is the drive. So we are going to shrink this and uh, depending on how much space you have left, you can uh, assign as much as 50 gigs to whatever size you have. I recommend minimum 50 uh, because that is how much you typically require if you are using Linux, okay? So since this is a fresh install and I have nothing in my uh, D drive, which is apparently the F drive, uh, I'm going to partition uh, for demonstrational purposes 100 gigs. So 102400, that is 100 gigs exactly. I'm going to click on shrink and uh, we have exactly 100 gigs and exactly 100 gigs has been left for the F drive or D drive in your case, all right? And now you'll ask me, how did I uh, calculate uh, that size? So basically we have to enter the size in megabytes and that is basically your GBs uh, into 1024. So let's say I want to convert 90 gigs into megabytes. I'm going to pre uh, multiply 90 by 1024. 
so this is the amount I would want to put uh, when uh, I do the shrink volume uh, I, I click on shrink volume this is what I want to put here all right so this is how you shrink your volumes now the last thing you want to do is uh, open your Rufus which is the disk burning utility and at the same time you would want to insert your USB device which should be of minimum 8 gigs uh, take up the backup of the USB device if you have any important data because that is going to be wiped off now this is how Rufus looks like okay so as you can see I have a 8 gig USB device here already I need to select my disk image which is in the downloads folder and it's also going to be in your case select that click on open and then uh, we are going to keep the partitioning scheme as MBR as this is a legacy BIOS install I'll do the UEFI, uh, UEFI install video later with GPT part partitioning scheme but yeah MBR is what we are uh, MBR and uh, legacy is what we are going to work with we are going to keep this as it is FAT32 and you want to click on start so I'm not going to click on start as this USB device is already uh, burnt with Linux Mint but uh, uh, I'll show you on the screen this is how it actually uh, happens so once this is done you can just click on close and that there we are so now you can uh, either unplug your device or keep it in uh, keep it plugged in uh, what we want to do is close all of this and uh, all of the windows that we have opened and we are going to shut down so let us shut down our computer once you turn on your power button, press one of the function keys shown on the screen which match with your motherboard or laptop manufacturer to enter the boot menu. Now select your USB device brand and using the arrow keys press enter. In my case it is uh, HP. Alright so once you select start Linux Mint, uh, you will be booted up into this environment which is the live environment of Linux Mint. And if you chose Cinnamon, this is what you should uh, be getting. If you chose Mate or XFCE, you should be getting a different environment. But the installation process for all three desktop environments are the same. Is the same because uh, the installer is the same. So what we want to do is come to this uh, disk drive icon here, which says Install Linux Mint, and double click on that, and the Linux Mint installer will pop up, as you can see. And we want to select our language. So language for me is going to be English, and click on Continue. And then we will be prompted to select our uh, keyboard layout which for me again is English United States International so just click on continue keep the defaults and then uh, you have the option to install multimedia codecs which I'm you, which you can tick but I'm going to leave this unchecked as we can always do that later and it saves times basically in the installation so click on continue all this process is offline by the way you do not need an internet connection so once that is done uh, we uh, we will be prompted to select our installation type and basically it will tell us that we have windows 10 already installed on this and the first option says install linux mint alongside windows 10 which is what we want to do but i'm not going to select that because uh, it makes a, the, the installer makes the partitions itself and we have no control on that so if you select this you can just click on install now uh, you will be prompted to uh, set your credentials and the installation will go on but like I told you we don't want to do that because we have no control on the partitioning so I'm going to click on something else and then click on continue which will uh, load my partition table here so slash dev slash sda1 which is highlighted as you can see this is the name of our disk uh, so I'm using a Seagate 500 gig hard disk drive as I told you already so this already has three windows partitions uh, which are formatted as NTFS uh, SDA1, SDA2 and SDA3 so SDA1 is my windows boot uh, partition uh, of 600 MBs uh, SDA2 is my C drive which has all the program files and SDA3 uh, is my D drive or F drive in this case alright and the free space 100 gig free space that we created in disk management of windows it is over here all right so this is where we are going to install linux now um, we have three primary partitions all these sda 1 2 and 3 are primary partitions and uh, mbr partitioning scheme only allows four primary partitions so all the partitions that we are going to make are going to be extended and don't worry if you don't understand this i'll just explain in a while so come to the plus icon here and then click on that and we should be uh, seeing this prompt so the first partition we want to make is the boot partition and that should be around 200 megabytes to 400 megabytes so I'll just give 250 uh, it doesn't need to be more than that uh, the type of the partition is going to be logical 
uh, the question of primary is gone because we only have uh, option to make extended partitions so logical partition is an ex extended partition uh, the location for the new partition is going to be at the beginning of this space so the space is actually this graph here this pictorial graph here and uh, somewhere over here we should have our partition and we are going to format this as ext4 and the mount point is going to be boot so click on ok and this partition should be created as SDA5 because this is an extended partition. So as you see SDA5, EXT4 and it's uh, assigned as boot. And of course you can't see it in the graph because it's very small as compared to the other partitions. So anyways, we are going to select the device for bootloader installation over here as SDA5 because that is uh, that partition is where we want to install our Grub bootloader for Linux. All right. So now we want to make a few more partitions. So come to free space, click on plus, and I'm going to create my uh, root partition. So root partition should be a minimum of 20 gigs. So 20 gigs in megabytes is 20 into 1024, which is 20480, all right, 20 gigs. So whatever amount of uh, gig you want to assign here, multiply that by 1024, you will get your size in megabytes. Uh, megabytes. So 20 into 1024 is 20, uh, 2048, uh, sorry, 202480, I'm really sorry. So uh, the type of the new partition is going to be logical again and beginning of this space because um, we are making a, a, an extended partition. And we are again going to format this as ext4 and the mount point is going to be this slash, the first one, and that is your root. So click on OK and SDA6 will be created. Now uh, we have SDA6. So now what we want to do is create our swap partition. So swap is uh, somewhat in layman's term your virtual memory. So you might have RAM installed, right? You have RAM installed. So swap works as an additional uh, RAM space uh, if your RAM is uh, not available. So you can use swap as RAM. So we are going to click on plus and uh, Swap should be equivalent to the amount of RAM physically installed on your machine. So I have 8 gigs of RAM installed. So I'm going to type in 8 into 1024, which is 8192. So 8, 1, 8 gigs into 1024 is 8192 MBs. Uh, it's going to be logical. This time it's going to be at the end of the space, which means we are going to see it somewhere here. The reason for that is we want it separate from all the other uh, primary part of uh, uh, the Linux partitions actually. So what we want to do is use this as swap area, come down and select swap area. So it's end of this space and a logical partition because this is extended, click on OK and uh, we should have SDA7. As you saw, this uh, graph has a blue area now which is our swap partition and this has been made below the free space because uh, it's at the end of the space, all right? And last but not the least, whatever space we have left, we want to assign that as a home partition. So home partition is basically where we store all our day-to-day -day files, folders, music, videos, all that. So we need, uh, so we have around like 75, 78 gigs of space left. Doesn't really matter, whatever is left, just use it. Uh, so it's going to be again logical as it, this is an extended partition. We're going to put this off at the end of the space or beginning of the space, doesn't really matter at this point, but I'll just keep it at the end of the space. Uh, formatting this as ext4 as usual and the mount point is going to be home. Click on OK and we should have SDA8. So this space will be used up now. Alright, so you see that the space has been taken already. So we have our partitions, let's just go through them. SDA5 is our boot, SDA6 is root, SDA7 is our swap and SDA8 is our home. Alright. Uh, and now we have also selected the device for bootloader installation which is the boot one SDA5 and click on install now. So this will ask you uh, these are the changes that are being made to the disk hit on continue. Select your uh, location I'm in India so that's fine with me. Uh, type in your credentials and once you're done you can click on continue. And now it's really the time to sit back and relax while uh, the installer installed Linux Mint according to the partitions we made. So once all of this is done, we should get a prompt to uh, restart our computer. So I'll see you then. So as you can see, the installation has finished and we can uh, reboot now. So you can just click on restart now. 
So once you reboot, uh, we should be booting back, in, back into Windows and that doesn't mean our uh, efforts are waste. So I'll see you once we log in. So once you have logged back into Windows, what you want to do is open the BCD editor which is Easy BCD and press on yes when it says do you want to allow this app to make changes. So once it opens up, this is how it looks like. And when you come to edit boot menu, you see that the reason why we booted back into Windows is because Windows bootloader only detects Windows 10. And we cannot uh, uh, wipe off the Windows bootloader because then we won't be able to boot into Windows. So what we want to do is make sure that uh, Windows bootloader recognizes our Linux boot partitions. So we are going to come to edit new entry, add new entry, sorry, and then come to Linux slash BSD, set uh, the type as grub2 and the name is going to be Linux Mint 20. It can be anything, but we have installed Linux Mint. And in the drive, you want to select this and select our Linux uh, boot partition. So that was partition four, the 250 MB partition uh, we had made. So you can just see that all other partitions are in gigs. This one is the only one which is in MB partition four and one, two, three, or of course our uh, Windows partition. So Linux partition four, five, six, seven, and four is the one which is in MB. So you can uh, recognize by that. And if you don't see these partitions, you can always go ahead and click on automatically locate and load. But now I already know the partition. So I'm just going to select that and click on the plus sign. And then now when we come to edit boot menu, we see that uh, Linux Mint 20 has been created. And uh, if you are on a slower computer, which means you have less resources, less RAM and a older CPU, what you want to do is select Linux Mint 20 and move this up and then select that. So once you select that, uh, you should get something like this. So when you press on your power button, this is how you will be uh, told to select which operating system you want to boot into. However, if you have more uh, resources, more RAM and a better CPU, uh, keep Windows 10 above and keep it checked. Uh, because we'll be using Metro Bootloader. So Metro Bootloader, uh, keep this checked. So Metro Bootloader is a bit resource holic, so it requires resources. Uh, you can uh, reduce the countdown to 10 seconds because I don't think you'd need more time to make the choice between both. And then you can click on Save Settings and once you reboot, uh, you will be able to boot into uh, either operating system by choosing. Uh, with your arrow keys. So this is how uh, we dual boot our system. So let's just see uh, the result now. So from now onwards, whenever you press your power button, uh, you will obviously see the Windows logo coming. But once this has loaded, you will be greeted by uh, the Metro boot loader. So you can use your arrows, arrow keys to select which operating system to boot into. So you have uh, you already know Windows 10 how it boots. So we'll just I'll show you Linux Mint uh, booting. So this is how it will boot. As you can see, we have successfully logged in inside our Linux Mint uh, installations. So this is how we basically dual boot Windows 10 and Linux Mint 20. So if you like the video, please do subscribe and please suggest what all you want to dual boot or triple boot. I have a bunch of dual boot and triple boot videos which you can check. So there it is. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a nice day.